Hello again everybody and welcome to Test Flight in the BF109K4. This is an aircraft that has been out for a while but it's still an open beta. So some of the stuff you see here might not necessarily reflect what is going to come out later. But I'll tell you what, let me just jump straight into this and you'll get the gist of what it is that I'm doing as we go here. But basically I'm just learning the aircraft from scratch. I'm going to start the same place I usually start with any new aircraft and go to the controls and since I've already flown the aircraft a little bit I've done a tutorial video for dive bombing and just some other little odds and ends I already have a lot of the controls mapped so there's not going to be a whole lot to do but we're bound to run into some more stuff as we get going that I'll have to either come back here or pause the simulation in progress and map some controls and then for a new aircraft I always come over to the special tab and check out all the items that are available here in the BF-109 the only things we have to worry about are the auto rudder which if you enable it, it obviously is going to help you out with some of the rudder controls. I'm going to leave that disabled. And we also have takeoff assistance. It scales from 0 to 100, 100 being full and 0 being no assistance at all. And what this does is it acts, well, it acts as a kind of an auto rudder when you're doing the takeoff and landing. Whenever you're on the ground, it gives you some assistance in keeping the aircraft aligned down the runway. That is one thing as we get going that you'll see is kind of hard to do. I, it's perfectly realistic in the way that it's set up, but there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of different forces acting on the aircraft during takeoff and landing. So there is no shame at all in using either of these assistance controls, or if you're brand new to this, even going as far as doing the game flight mode or some of the other assists, because you know, World War II aircraft simulated to the degree that this aircraft and the other World War II aircraft in DCS are simulated too are difficult to control. But I'm just out of pure stubbornness more than anything else. I'm going to leave all the assists off and we'll see how it goes. Now as far as options that we have for gameplay in the beta version, we have some instant action missions that are available. I was originally going to just do the instant action mission, start with a cold start and go from there, but I'm going to do something a little bit different that we'll get to here in a second. Now there is no dedicated training module for the BF-109 yet, it's still an open beta so that's something that I would expect to come at some point. We don't have any single missions yet, but we do have a campaign, I'm going to try this. It's the BF-109 K4 Challenge Campaign, it looks like it's just a series of missions that progressively get more and more complex. It starts simple with like a startup and taxi, then moves to takeoff and landing, then moves into some more advanced flight, and then into weapons employment, which sounds like for my purposes, if I wanted to learn an aircraft, that's exactly how I would go about doing it. So I'm going to give this a try. There's also a challenge campaign for the Falk Wolf 190 that I have not tried, and I believe the P-51. Yeah, the P-51. All the World War II aircraft so far I've had this, but this will be the first one that I've tried. So at this point, I've read through the manual a couple of times. I've flown it around a little bit, but I just don't have a grasp of what all the systems are in the aircraft, where they're located in the cockpit, or exactly how they work and how they use them. So that's what we're going to get into here. I've got the manual loaded on the kneeboard for reference as we go, and I'll be using it a lot. So let's go ahead and get into the campaign. And the first mission we're presented with is Startup and Taxi, exactly what I had in mind for this one. 0859 start, and the situation in this mission, you must start your aircraft and taxi to the runway to your right. That's about as straightforward as it gets. Let's go ahead and get into the cockpit. Okay, so we'll start things off on the ground. You might notice that it is not the time of day and this is not the parking location that we were expected to have mission briefing or if you film the campaign yourself. I went back and made some changes. The lighting, it was just too dark and we were facing into the sun and that's just not a very flattering way to present an aircraft. So this should look a lot better as we have a, looks like another 109 up there, making some circuits around the airfield, got some movement around the airfield. So instead of starting up and taxiing to the right as brief, we're going to start up and taxi to the left. Now, how I'm going to go about doing this, I am going to run through the procedure step by step for the startup and the taxi. But I'm going to pause as I get to some different systems, I'm not sure exactly when and what systems, as we get to them, and have a more detailed look at how they work so that we not only understand step by step how to perform the procedures but also understand what the procedures are doing and how the systems work so that we don't necessarily in the future have to go step by step creating from any kind of a manual or a checklist. A lot of what you can do here in 
an aircraft of any type is, I mean, of course you want to follow the checklist and the procedures in as much that you do not do anything that could damage the aircraft or be an unsafe act. But provided you understand the systems, you can find some shortcuts that you might enjoy taking or you can do things in a different order as long as you understand what you're doing and as long as you're not going to damage your aircraft or damage yourself in the process. But before we start getting into the checklist, and I've got it up here on my, my knee board, I'll have to step through, I'll do that here in a little bit, I've got the entire manual here. I'm just going to take a minute to look around the cockpit and get familiar with the overall layout so that when we do start looking for levers, buttons, controls that are called out in the procedures, we don't have to spend a lot of time looking. So starting from the left and working my way around, I've got a map case up here, I've got controls for trim and for the flaps right here, these big wheels. We'll get to those here in a bit. I've got engine throttle, engine controls right here. I've got my tailwheel lock. So coming around, I've got landing gear controls, starter. So I'm really trying to get just a feel for, okay, when it calls for something having to do with a specific system, where in general do I look? And if it's, for example, engine control related, I know to look over here on the left. Okay, so we get into our main instruments and... All this stuff is going to be very similar, if not identical, to what we already did in the Focke Wolf 190 that I did a, a test flight series on as well. So we'll be able to carry a lot of that knowledge forward, although it was a while ago. And a lot of it has escaped me at this point. So weapon system controls down here on the center pedestal and up top. That looks very, very familiar. We've got a clock up there and of course the... Oh, what are you? Are you the Revy, uh, Revy 16 gun sight? I'll have to... It's dangerous to start quoting stuff from uh, from memory here. I've got a perfectly good manual here. So we'll get to this here in a, a little bit. Got a flare gun. That'll be fine. Uh, a lot of fun to play with. So, okay, coming down, I've got electrical system control. So this is the circuit breaker panel that I'll be using to apply and remove power to and from systems. Okay, this is going to be the... Yeah, that's the radiator control. Oxygen system controls, and you'll find that... When going from aircraft to aircraft of the same nationality, or in a lot, of, a lot of cases the same manufacturer, you'll start to see little systems start to emerge. For example, in the German aircraft that we've been presented with so far, we've had oxygen system controls labeled in blue, we've had fuel controls labeled in yellow oil, and certain engine instrument controls sort of highlighted in orange or brown, so... Once you get into the aircraft and start to work with the systems, those little details will start to stand out and you'll be able to start to get a better feel. And now we've got the radio controls right down here. Got a hose of some kind. Is that like a... It could be the oxygen hose. This is probably like the connector for communications to my uh, microphone right here. And this would probably be where I hook up my mask for uh, supplemental breathing oxygen. Then we have a wire bundle going back to the back to some different aircraft systems, possibly the uh, the radio antennae and just other systems in the back. So that's the overall feel. It's a very it's a very simple aircraft once you want to get right down to it and everything is laid out as you'll see that the case usually is in World War II German aircraft in a very, very thought out, systematic way so that once you get the feel, you know exactly where everything is. So let me go ahead and skip ahead in the manual to the startup procedure. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're to the normal procedures, normal startup. So let's just go step by step. And what I find works for me whenever I'm trying to learn procedures is to, the first time that I do it, take my time and really understand what's going on. Don't move on until you understand why you just threw a switch or why you just activated a system. Because this first run through is really the opportunity that you're going to have where you're going to be the most focused and you're going to be less likely to skip ahead and to get into a rush and to form bad habits. So let's go ahead and start this methodically and as soon as you enter the cockpit, make sure that the ignition switch is in the off position and the fuel pumps are in the ZU off position. So, okay, ignition, that's going to be the magnetos right there. They're in the bottom off position. And what we have, fuel pump selector, that's going to be over here on our engine controls that we were just looking at. Okay, so I have two pumps here for the fuel system, pump one and pump two. I'm going to eventually, once I get into the startup, I believe, yeah, definitely use both pump one and pump two. But I could select an individual pump if 
I needed to. Now, make sure chalks are properly placed. The fire extinguisher is ready at hand and the aircraft is facing upwind. Well, I can't, I can't really say whether or not I'm upwind or not, although... No, I'm actually facing downwind just based off of the wind off the smokestacks. There's nothing that I can really do about that, but... Yeah, we'll, we'll take that as good in either case. And nothing I can do really about the chalks or the fire extinguishers. We seem to be kind of, uh... Devoid of, <laughs> devoid of support equipment out here, but okay, that's fine. Okay, let's close the canopy. And is there would there be a reason not to leave the canopy open for this? Possibly, I don't know. Maybe that's just something you do in the 109. Uh, typically, in a World War II aircraft, you have the option at least of leaving the canopy open. But it says close it until proven otherwise. I'll. Trust it and close it. So is there a, a separate lever lock here? Or does that take care of the entire thing? Let me... Okay, I, I think I see what's happening there. That's the that's actually the lock locking mechanism. It is... I think it's... Yeah, it's got... It has to have like a pin that goes into this slot right there. So that's what I think is happening. Okay, canopy comes down. Lever goes forward, and then the pin goes in and locks into that little slot that we were just looking at. Okay, good enough. Turn on the A100 generator and B100 circuit breakers on the circuit breaker panel. Now, the generator is the top left, and that's already on, as is actually the, the battery. Those start in. Now, I need to find the V100, and this one is... Ignition on, although I suspect from the placard here that it does a lot more than just the ignition, but I'll I'll enable it. And this is a good opportunity right here. I wish I read more German. I'll see exactly what this placard says and see exactly what hole we enabled right there. I'll be right back. Okay, yeah, and just as I thought, uh, V100, in addition to the ignition, we just turned on the MW50 system, or didn't turn it on, but we applied power to the... Uh, controls for the MW50 system, the prop pitch, automation, the landing gear indicator, the compass, the Revy illumination. And yeah, that is the, the Revy 16 gun sight that we have up there. So all those systems came on with that one circuit breaker. Okay, now we get into turn the governor automation switch into the upper manual position. So governor automation, it'll be over here on the engine controls, it's a switch... It is, yeah, it's right there. Okay, I have that manual. Upper is... No, I stand corrected. Back is automatic. Upper is manual. Okay, got it. Move the propeller pitch rocker switch on the throttle lever back and forth. So that, I know, is this little switch right here. I haven't mapped my HOTAS on the Warthog. I haven't mapped to the... Uh, what would I call that? I would call that the boat switch. It's just the rocker switch. Yeah, boat switch. So, let's see what it tells us to do here. Move the propeller rocker switch back and forth, and verify the prop pitch indicator moves accordingly. Stop the propeller in the 12 o'clock position. Now, prop pitch, yeah, same as the Fuck Wolf 190 right here. That's... Okay, I can... Yeah, I've got to move, and I'm actuating the rocker switch. That's the 12 o'clock position right there. And I wonder... Let me go to the external real quick. I, I know I might be taking a lot more time than some of you might have expected, but... Well, if you're a long-time subscriber, then you know this is what I do, and you were prepared, I'm sure. Okay, so I'm actuating the switch. Yeah, I can see it moving. It's very, very slow. It's very, very subtle, but yeah, it's moving into a more coarse pitch right now. Yeah, you can you can see that yourself. Okay, so got that, and I verify that it's working, and I need to set it back to the 12 o'clock position. And I will leave it there. Okay, turn the governor automation switch to the automatic position, and the prop pitch indicator should move to the 1230 position, so I'm going to actuate the switch. I'm actually going to turn my volume up a little bit so I can hear some more of this stuff. I'll try to mix it so that you can hear some of it too, unless it's too overbearing. Okay, auto, I can hear and see it moving, 1230. Okay, so that's just a... Really what we're going for there is just an operational check of the switch in the manual setting to make sure it works and also a check of the automatic system to make sure that it goes to the proper position. And if the prop pitch indicates otherwise the battery should be replaced. If the battery replacement is impossible, the automation switch may be held in manual when below 1900 RPM. Okay, that's 
Interesting. That's good info to know. 